Today is Monday, March 30th. It's Monday? Really? Yeah, I think so. It's still Monday. March 30th. Welcome, welcome to the 42nd Color Lab Convention in Springfield, Missouri. This is the hashtag reboot session. And uh, my name is Betsy Gata. And I have a, and I'm your moderator. And our panelist today is Shauna Carey. No matter how it looks on paper, that's how she said I should pronounce it. So, a little bit of, between the two of us, we do practically everything. Shauna, Shauna, um, she said, you may, you may know the last name because she's married to Vic Carey, who's been calling for over 40 years. She took, Shauna took her first square dance class in high school and then didn't dance again for almost 20 years. She's been a clogging instructor for 35 years, brown dance cure slash instructor for 15 years, calling and teaching squares for seven years very actively with three local clubs for the past four years. Recording artist for Fine Tunes, Gold Wings, and sh Sharpshooter Records with singers taught for the vocal ra or singers targeted for the vocal range of female callers. In real life, financial she's a financial inventory supply chain and analyst an analyst. I speak English for the Toro Company in 25 years. Uh, my name is Betsy Gada. As I said, I'm the moderator. I have been calling for over 50 years, longer than I care to admit that these days, dancing for longer than that. I grew up in square dancing, and I, I do squares from basically basic through C3 and call contras. My, I have a husband who does the rounds. I let him take care of some. And so between us, we've worked with a lot of different people and a lot of different groups. And one of the things I'm going to say, this is the reboot. So if you have a group that's in trouble, um, my lead off is if your group that's in trouble is using the phrase, we've always done it this way, they need to change that idea. And uh, that's all I'm going to say in the beginning. For now, I'm going to let Shauna take it away. And then we have a remote microphone. If you have questions, Please state your name and where you're from, and then ask your question. Please put the questions on the microphone so we can get a good recording. All right. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. This is my first time on a panel, so I'm only just a little nervous. Um, the session is called Reboot, How to Revitalize a Club, a Caller, Dance Leaders, and Dancers, and that's a pretty big task, I think. Um, so I looked at the word revitalize, I kind of like data. And it says it means to give new life to, to give new vitality or vigor to, and it's a verb. And I remember grade school, a verb is an action word. It means we have to do something. And the one thing this session is not going to be is a one-size-fits-all, easy answer, quick fix. Because I don't think one exists. If you're looking for that, I think we need to go to Fantasyland. Um, but that's out at Disneyland where I live. And I think if you're trying something that's not working, then it's time to try something else. So when we look at this, a club, a caller, dance leaders and dancers, I kind of grouped the club, dance leaders and dancers together. There's handouts over here if you didn't pick them up there on the table over there. If you want to follow along, some like to follow along. So when we're talking about new dancers, we can find new dancers from our current dancers. Our current dancers need to talk it up with their friends. The class that I'm teaching right now, I'm real pleased with this class. It's a pretty good sized class for the area. We have 15, 16 new dancers come in, two scores of new dancers, and our area is a great class. And they're on the young side. The average age is probably 45. I've got some in the 20s, some in their 30s. And they are excited to be there. And it's really fun to teach at a class like that with young people who are getting excited and the nucleus of them all came from the same church group. So they knew each other before, and that's kind of the social loop. If they, if they have things besides square dance in common, then they're gonna to continue to, to socialize with each other. As far as uh, new leaders, 
We need to encourage the old regime to embrace new ideas and allow others to lead. And Betsy said, if you've done it, I've always done it this way. A few years ago, do they still have the su suggestions for the Color Lab theme contest yes. each year? Yes. A few years ago, I submitted one, and it wasn't really politically correct. But it was that saying, if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. And definition the definition of insanity is to do the same thing the same way and expect a different result. And so I said, the theme should be stop the insanity. And they said, that's, that's clever, but I don't think we're going to go there. So, but we do, in some ways, need to stop these, we need to stop expecting different results by doing the same things. It's a new world. There's, people are connecting in different ways. So the dancers that you have need to reach out to their friends, bring their friends in. My dad is in a bowling league. There's a club that has 10 or 12 bowlers in their club because they bowl together and they dance together. And like I said, it's that social glue. Sometimes, to reboot, you need to bring in a fresh face, a new caller. That doesn't necessarily mean that the old caller was doing anything wrong. Um, as Betsy said, I'm married to a caller who's been calling for a number of years. And he's been teaching the same club for a long time. And one of the clubs, they've been talking about what to do, and finally he said, you know what, I think it's time for a fresh face in here. And they agreed to go ahead and do that. It's not that he was doing anything wrong, it was just time for someone new to maybe revitalize in another way. Sometimes it means, means a new format. Um, Multi-cycle for your classes. I just pulled some of the things we've heard. The Nest, uh, Embracing Mainstream, the club that I'm teaching for right now, they are a plus club. They want me to get from zero to plus in a year. We all know that's really difficult to do. For the last two years, I have pushed back a little bit and we've graduated at Main Street. They're still trying to get them to dance plus and I'll come early and help them out, but we've graduated at Main Street. And I feel like that's kind of a win that I convinced them they're not ready to graduate at plus. And they have, they dance twice a month, one month they alternate so that they can bring the new dancers in for one of their dances. As far as that social glue, other activities outside, earlier today, Rake was talking about the first night of the class, everybody should have the same name tags, throw the club badges away. I had never heard throw the club badge away the first night. I thought that was an interesting idea because then the new dancers don't know who is who. And another idea that I saw, because I sit out on Facebook and I look at the groups and watch the arguments and see what's going on, I rarely join because Sometimes they're not always efficient or productive, but it's interesting to sometimes see what's going on. And one of the ideas was the first night of class, have them put their name and then list something they do as a hobby. My name is Shauna and I quilt. I don't, but you know, if I did. It's amazing that you get to people start talking about other things besides dancing, what they're there for. That's the social glue that keeps them together. This class that I'm teaching this year, when class is over, they're not leaving. And the club president and I are standing up as I'm tearing down my equipment. He's helping me, look at this. They're talking to each other, they don't want to go home. And that's not a bad thing. That's a really good thing. I talked about social media for the club, for the caller. Join the Facebook groups. Create them for your club. Um, one of the most successful clubs in our area, very large, probably 60 or 70 members, and 40 or 50 of them will go out and dance on visitations. They have their own Facebook page. I've joined it, a lot of them have. They post pictures where they are, and they're constantly saying, 36 rogues went here, 28 rogues were here, the rogues went in mass out here. And it's not just where their dances, they go out for other social activities. So again, it's that social glue. And then the last thing I put here is a new, a new dress code. Um, modest, neat, clean. It doesn't need to be anything more than that. If somebody wants to wear traditional attire, that's great. If they don't, that's great too. We don't need to say no frou-frou go out. We don't have to say you have to wear it either. And then moving on to colors. I don't want to take Betsy's time. Don't worry about it. Okay. To revitalize the caller, 
I'm still pretty new as a caller. I probably don't need to be revitalized yet. I still am really learning. Um, but you'll see this a lot. First one, new music. Invest in your craft. There's new music to be found. I know, I got music producers back there. <laughs> but not just for yourself, but for your dancers. Um, probably shouldn't tell this story, but when, I, when Vic and I first got married, his girl he dated prior to dating me was also a dance instructor. And he was saying, you know, one of the great things about her classes was she always had new, fresh music. And I was teaching clogging at the time, and I knew at the beginning of the class, I play this one, this one, and this one, because they're perfect for teaching the steps to. Well, guess what? That, that's not the only piece of music that is perfect for teaching that step to. And it challenged me to go find new music. And guess what? I found other new songs I liked. So don't be afraid. Don't get stuck being comfortable. And then with that, you might need a new delivery. And I'm still trying to find my delivery in some ways. But Buddy Session and Jeanette. The different music you're playing requires a de different delivery. Sometimes you'll want to be chanting, sometimes it's just not going to fit with the music that you're playing. And I talk about this root hogger die, I hear that big pig little pig root hogger die. I've never said that over the microphone until today. And I probably never will again. Because it's just not me. I've heard it, you know, enchanting pattern calling, and I won't say who. I won't. Uh, number three, new music. And I know we said that already, but as far as new music, support the producers who are investing in our craft. Uh, being involved with fine tune, and I know the music doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen without a lot of expense and a lot of work. They're going out of their way to create music for us to use, and we need to support their efforts. It doesn't take much to just buy two new songs a month. It, it's going to help you, and it's going to help them, and keep that music coming, because if we're not buying it, it's not going to keep being Start there. with two new songs a year, that would be fine. Two new songs a year? That would be fine wow. at this point. There's a lot of people haven't bought a song in 20 years. I say two new songs a month. That'd be good, too. <laughs> All right. And then as a caller, you can improve and find new skills. Always be a student, keep learning. You can do that at Caller Schools, Caller Lab. Find a mentor, someone who's been doing longer, somebody who does something that you think is great. Maybe I want to start, um, I, I dance through challenge, but I don't really teach it unless I'm subbing for Vic at a class, in which case I go read his material, and I, it works for me because I know what to do and I can correct them and I can get them out if they're in trouble, but I don't call challenge. I don't really even call advanced, even though I can. If I want to, it's going to be me learning a new skill. And it's something once I feel I've mastered what I'm working on now that I intend to, to do. Find ways to revitalize yourself that way. Um, network. You guys are all networking because you're here at Caller Lab. Um, but get out and dance. How many of you do go out and dance just to, to meet other callers? meet other dancers, meet other dance leaders. You can go to the local dances, go out to weekend festivals. There's one that's about an hour and a half away from my home. And I knew I couldn't get there for the weekend, but I drove out just to dance Saturday night. And it was great. I met a lot of people, and we were pushing a, a, a cruise, passed out flyers, sold two cruises. And it's a visibility for you, and it also um, revitalizes your own Attitude and excitement about the MTI, that's what I was looking for, excitement. All right, number six, new music. <coughs> it's kind of a recurring sort of theme here. You can find music anywhere. The music producers, yes, there's also music to be found on iTunes and Amazon. Listen to the radio. I'm really guilty of that. If I get in my rut, I listen to my iPod, which has old music on it. And I listen to talk radio. Um, and new songs for a while, the only new songs I knew were the ones that were on Glee. <laughs> but there was a lot of great music there. It's like, you know what? I need to start listening to the radio more. As a caller, use social media. Join the Facebook group, group for callers. There's a lot of them out there. Did you know there's a group for, call, for music? For music? 
How many of you are in those groups? Okay, there's one for callers. Rick has one, translates for ask calls for me. That one's fascinating. Because dancers post and they ask questions. And it's visibility for you, it's visibility for your clubs. Um, post pictures uh, of the clubs and what you're doing. And I'll also say be real careful about that because if we're trying to, to promote a certain image, we want it to be the right one. So the pictures you post, make sure they're re reflecting the activity the way you want it to be seen. Uh, yes? What? On, the, on the microphone. On the mic. Hi, I'm Mike Driscoll from Minnesota. Uh, what is that group that Dean Brown had started on Facebook? Which one? She started a group, uh, you know, where you can post stuff on Facebook. Who did? Dean Brown had. Dean Brown, I don't know. I think it's Mike's wife, though. Is Mike's that Mike's wife? Yeah, Mike Brown had. Yeah. Yeah. That's what Mike's I don't know if anybody here knows the group that Dean Brown with. I, what I would do is just... On the mic. On the mic. Mike Hogan's going to look it up. All right. Try. Mike is going to try to find that for us. But on Facebook, you can search. Search for Square Dance. And that's why when you're posting, uh, and I, again, I, I'm on Facebook a lot. I don't always remember hashtag Square Dance. If people are searching, they might not find it with hashtag Square Dance. They will. So I'm going to try to be better about that. Uh, one example, and I would challenge all the teachers to do it because it's fun, kind of fun. Take pictures with your class. I did a, a class selfie, and it's hard for you to see here, but I do this with my Sunday school class. We take a picture, and my score dancers saw it on Facebook, and they were a little jealous. So we took a class selfie and posted it, and I get a lot of interest with that. And you can see they're very young. It's kind of exciting. Number seven. New music. I know. Join the social media groups out there to discuss music. Like the pages for the for the music producers. Music producers, how many of you have Facebook pages? Rick's not listening, but he does too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Go for Go go find them and then hit the like button. When they post about new music, you'll get visibility for that. And then guess what? Share it. Once you share it, all of your friends will see it. They might not have tons of visibility, and maybe they have two or three hundred likes on their page. I have over a thousand friends. That's amazing to me. I know some of them. <laughs> but if I share their post, a thousand more people see it. So share the things. Get the word out. Join a local caller organization. Uh, they're everywhere. And then attend the meetings, share information. If they ask you to do something, do it. I guess they're laughing back there. Yes, sir. Did you find the group? We're still working, we're still trying. No one's doing it. It makes me nervous. It makes me laughing. I don't. One of them's having to turn the crank. Keep his phone All right. Also, caller training. I talked about learning new things. Support the newer callers. If you've been around for a while, or even if you haven't, share what you know, offer assistance, be a mentor. I told you to find a mentor. Be a mentor for someone else. I've been teaching dance and classes since I was a teenager, and they're not kidding when they say the best way to learn is to teach. You learn so much by teaching. So find someone that you can share information with and do that, and then, Finally, on this list, again, is music. And this one, I didn't say new music. In my opinion, there is nothing more powerful than music to affect the way we feel. And I know that is true. Whether you use new music, old music, use it wisely, because music really is your most powerful tool. Like I said, before I turn this back to Betsy, there really isn't a one-size-fits-all fix. And I kind of joke, this isn't Fantasyland, because we're not at Disneyland. But then, I was thinking about that earlier, uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I thought, you know, we, we're not at Disneyland, but in a way, maybe we are. I thought about the lands at Disneyland, fantasy land. Some people think we don't have problems. <coughs> Everything is fine. They're in fantasy land, I think. If you think there's an easy fix, fantasy land. I prefer to think fantasy land of the place where it's happily ever after. We can make it better, and it's going to be okay in the end. What about Frontierland? Do we have Frontierland in Square Dance calling? I 
think so. The old school, old ways, old dress codes, old music, it has its place, but maybe just a tip of night, maybe a certain club, maybe a theme. Um, it's just one of the aspects of the dance. Adventureland, that's where we get to have fun. Be adventurous, try new things, dare to be different, stop the insanity, do something different, share your successes. And then New Orleans Square, I thought about that for a little bit, I thought square, there should be something. But when you go to New Orleans, what are you doing? You're having fun. Should be fun. Your party nights. All the things we do, the social networking, the social glue, getting out and partying with your club outside of the square dance. The friends. New Orleans Square is all about the fun. And then there's Toontown. And I don't think of it as cartoon, I think of it as Toons, T-U-N-E. Your new music again. Because it's all about that music. Oh, thank you. Music. It's all about the music. Yeah, yeah. And then my favorite actually is Main Street. And I was talking to somebody uh, about this and whether I should play with the Disneyland lands. And he says, What are you going to do for Main Street? Well, Main Street is Main Street. We need to focus on Main Street. Get the clubs excited about Main Street. It's Main Street. He says, Main Street's the most boring place at Disneyland. And I said, No, no, it is not. I've been to Disneyland. I had a pass for a few years and I traded pins for a few years and was kind of obsessed with that. So I know all the back corners of Main Street. If you focus on Main Street and peel back the layers and find all the things you can do with it, it is not the most boring place in Disneyland. There's great things to find, great things to do, nuggets that you would never find otherwise. And then finally, Tomorrowland, that's the future. I think that's to be determined, but what it is, is up to us. And we, as leaders, need to lead the way. And even though at Disneyland they're all separate lands, they all work together to become that magic kingdom. Do you want to run the sure. microphone? I do have some information about that. Excellent. Okay. Yeah, I'm David Fullaway, and I'm a caller and club president, etc., on Maui. And I think this is one of the greatest uh, presentations I've seen with a blueprint of what to do. And I'd like to add a couple things. On the top, I put down, first of all, I'm uh, most of us are callers that are involved and already doing an awful lot of work. To do all these things, we need a lot of help from all our clubs that we represent. So I'm going to stand and send this to our board, which is the board of USA West, uh, which is made up of club people and club presidents, and for club distribution, so that our clubs all the way down the line will get this. I added a couple things. Um, that I thought were also equally important. Uh, caller training, get out and support the new callers or create new callers. Uh, seek out and call at and for different groups. I added that down at the bottom. Um, a new dress code, we talked about that a little earlier at a, at a workshop. Um, don't forget the old caller lab standards or standards for dress, but also include and and allow and embrace modest, neat, and clean. Very good. Thank you very much. Do you want to get their information about that? Yeah. Okay. Well, oh, no, I respect my own. Buddy. I respect my own. Buddy's give it to him for It's about time you respect your elders. I'm Buddy. I'm Buddy. I am Buddy. I'm buddy. And I'm here to just say I really enjoy what you have to say, and uh, I like the idea of. Uh, Caller not being afraid to uh, step away from his club. And I would like to say to you that what I've been doing over the last two years, I call for a few clubs in my area, and um, every time they have an election, I tender by resignation. Period. I say, I'm, I'm, I'm just letting you know I'm going to be resigning when your new officers come in. And they'll say, Are you, What's the matter? What's the matter? I said, There's nothing, absolutely nothing to matter. I just want to clear the deck so that if you have someone you'd rather come in and take over, no hard feelings. It's easy for you to do that. And every single club 
has come back and said, we want you to come back and renew. I said, great, I'll renew for you for another year, and on your next elections, you'll expect my resignation. And I think that every caller should do that. And if you're afraid of not getting hired back, then maybe you should be afraid of not getting hired back. It might be time to reboot yourself. Thank you. I'm Rick Hampton, younger than Buddy Weaver. Yep. <laughs> and uh, in social media, somebody had asked earlier about a particular Facebook uh, Facebook group. Uh, Jen, I couldn't find that one. I found Mike's site. I couldn't find hers. But if you just, in your Facebook search box, type in just SQ, and you will see 10 or 15. You might have to look at various places in there, but you'll see 10 or 15 uh, hits. Many will say square dance. Some might you know, talk about, I don't know, Times Square or whatever. And then if you pick one of those and you look at the members on that, join that group, and it's amazing how quickly you can get interconnected. Also, I know a lot of people are, 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 have commented, it's like, we don't want to do Facebook, we can't stand all those game requests. It takes, yeah, okay. It's real easy to fix every time you get one. Just, just on the right hand side, you click, and it just say block this app. And this is when it block all invites from that Candy Crush. It'll do that. It takes about two weeks to get rid of all of them. I have that request. Blocked it. Hi, Kathy Hamilton. Well, I'm, I'm going to move us ahead to I have a lot of the same ideas as Shona and a, a few that I expressed differently. Probably the same thing said a different way, but that may make a difference. My first thing is, and, and Shona kind of touched on this, nurture the new members. How many times do we do a class and have them kind of squashed like a bug by some well-meaning person who says the wrong thing? We need to feel how they feel and put ourselves in their places. Include the new members in your club dances by inviting them to dances while they're still in, in class. And our club, uh, my home club was a college age group for many, many, many years. We left campus somewhere in the early 90s and we de developed into a family club. We, you know, we made specific changes to make that happen because otherwise we would not be here. And I have to brag a little bit, we celebrated our 60th anniversary last June. Um, we ordered 200 dangles. We ran out without many people visiting. We had a live band, the best band we could find was a contra dance band, so we adapted slightly to a different style of pattern music and they played singing squares, a lot of which were kind of old time, but you know, we don't you always use old time music, so for the dancers it was different. But it, had, it took work to adapt to working with the band because they had never played for a square dance. And what was really interesting was we changed their perception of square dances because we were uh, different looking than what they expected. They told me that during the dance. So these, the, this worked both ways. Uh, if needed, change your dance format to alternate basic mainstream tips or, or mainstream plus tips. Our club happens to be mainstream. In New Jersey we have, I can think of three clubs that dance mainstream in northern New Jersey area and they worked hard to, to continue. You know, rather than being overwhelmed by let's dance plus, like some of them may have one plus tip per night. Ours does not. But we had no other night for lessons, so what we did for adapting was to teach lessons for an hour before the club dance on first and third Sunday afternoons. After that, every other tip at the club dance is wherever the students are. So we blend them into the group before they ever graduate. Now in order to do this, the club members had to buy into it. They had to be willing not to sit there and kind of stare at the people who were new, but to get up and dance with them. And we talked to them and said, you know, this club was down to about two squares, three squares that we had arrayed from another group. And maybe one of the squares was dancing and the rest were socializing, and it was really kind of boring. And we started doing the lessons this way, and people, we basically told the club members, you know, if you don't dance with these people and don't make them feel welcome, you won't have a place to dance in a few more years. 
period. And it worked. Now we dance, and I'm not sure how many people have members, I'd have to look, but my friend Ginny, who does the treasury books and keeps the books, said we're the largest club in northern New Jersey right now. I do not know how many that is, but we dance six to eight squares on a regular basis. Some of them are guests from the other clubs. The clubs near us that dance plus, when their folks reach mainstream, they send them over to us on Sunday afternoons to practice, and then they'll go and learn plus at the classes that are continuing for the plus club, but they get mainstream practice and makes them better and become more comfortable dancers. Um, so I said it need make sure the new dancers are spread throughout the squares. We all know with callers, if you have new dancers invited to the dance, where are they? They're congregating somewhere in the back of the room, cowering together in one group where they can't help each other. Mix them if you have to. Promenade in one big circle and mix them around. Have the heads pass through and promenade to another square. Get them away from each other because they will, they will not dance comfortably with each other. Figure out some other way to get them involved. Uh, talk to the new dancers. I said students on the handout. I should have said new dancers, but talk to them. Find out their names and their interests. Same as what Shauna said. You'll, you'll find a come, and then you can go, oh, you quilt. Well, well my friend Ginny quilts. And then introduce those people. Get a common bond. I have talked, I've heard of people say they talked all year about their class, and they couldn't name one person in the class. That makes the people a group, not individuals. Learn to how to help. If you're angeling a class, learn how to help without intimidating. What happens when people get excited? Their voices go up, they get loud, they start waving their hands. How intimidating is that when you're trying to help somebody? Learn to say, I need you, over here. And if the square breaks down, let it break down. Rather than grabbing whoever you need and yanking them into position, which I have seen done. From the, I'm, on, I'm on the stage and I watch these things and it's not a pretty sight. Learn and teach your angels. If you're, if you're doing lessons, invite the angels and teach them and tell them, sensitize them to the fact that the new dancers need gentle treatment. They're scared to death. I truly believe at a class dance or where you invite people out to dance from, and they've all partway through lessons, I believe that if the ceiling fell down, the tile fell from the ceiling, Several new dancers will be going, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> They're that scared. We have no idea, those of us who've danced a while have no idea how petrified these people are to make a mistake and break down the square. Take the new dances to a class dance. When I say a class dance, in our area, the Northern New Jersey Association has a, a midterm dance partway through, it's the end of January usually. And the Callers Association has another dance specifically for people in lessons, newer dancers and angels, uh, a month later. If your class, if you if there's any of these in the area, don't just tell the dancers about them. They don't. They're comfortable traveling here. Say, I'm going to pick you up, Mike, and I'm going to take you to this dance. You're going to have a great time. I'll make sure you dance. And you know, if your partner can't come, we'll make sure you have partners all the way through, and take care of people. Don't just say, here Mike, come to this dance. Here's a flag. Bring them along. In your clubs, plan some different form formats for fun. Theme nights, such as pajama nights, silly socks, or hats. A toga party. We just had a toga party because we danced on March 15th. It's the Ides of March. And our club president kept insisting we should have togas. And a lot of, several people did come out in one form or toga or another, and we're, we've gotten more, we're trying very hard now to put the club on Facebook, so somebody filmed things, and it got on Facebook or YouTube, and I know that I mentioned this at a table at lunch somewhere, and Tim Mariner said, oh yeah, I saw that. So our toga party is somewhere on, on the internet. Silly tips. We tried dancing on bubble wrap. That may or may not be a good idea. It was a little, 
It was fun. It was a little fun, but it was also a little slippery. So judge your age before you dance on bubble wrap, and make sure you tape it well to the floor. Uh, no hands dancing. It's very, very hard, so you make it very easy, and make the choreography very easy, but all of a sudden they're really working to dance with no hands. Inflate some balloons and have you the square try and keep them up for as long as possible as they're dancing. Uh, dancing blindfold. Do not let everyone in the square put on a blindfold. It doesn't work. Everyone's afraid to reach out for fear they may grab the wrong thing. <laughs> Uh, dancing Gemini. Does everybody know what Gemini would be? That would be two people dancing as one. Those of us who learned to dance as kids, when we didn't have enough for a second square, we'd jump in. I'm always, I am always better as a left-hand dancer. I want to be the left-hand dancer and get somebody else to be. So Sean and I, if we were dancing Gemini, would be like this and we would be one person. Twins. Twins. Yep. Gemini is the twins, exactly. We, we called it Bobsy Twins. Bobsy Twins, okay. Same principle, but have them, have them, them dance that. We have some younger people in our group, they, they come and go, but when they were there one time, I was watching, and a couple didn't get into the square, so that, that square started with eight, eight people, it grew to 10. I believe before the end of the tip, it grew to 15. <laughs> and they were keeping up with the rest of the club. Uh, social happenings. Encourage dancers to go out after the dance for a snack or a beverage. Please make sure to invite the new members specifically. A lot of times they feel like, well, nobody invited me. I'm not sure if they want me to come. Make sure that you let them know we want you to join us. We're going to here for, to do this. Uh, schedule a club picnic or other activities. What about scheduling a flash mob to dance at the mall? We used to have, in our club, we used to have a, uh, a Marine. He was, he was the boyfriend of one of our, well, how do I explain that? Uh, one of our second generation, because when we left the college campus, the people who started in college, several of them stayed with us. We made accommodations so they could dance and bring the kids to play in the corner and all, all of this stuff. And so I'm, I'm saying all this like it's nothing, but how many clubs would be totally resistant to these ideas? There was a, a, an expandable playpen in the back of our hall for quite a while, and I'm sure there are more snapshots of adults in that expandable playpen than the kids, but we had it there for them. So we raised some people to dance, and then they got out of it, and then they were getting interested again, but this one girl, Kim, wanted to bring her boyfriend, Dean, and he's like, no, no. And Kim's mom, Karen, did a favor for Dean, and he made the mistake of saying, I owe you, I'll do anything. <laughs> so Karen said, you have to try square dancing one time. So Kim walked in with Dean, and, and Karen had warned me, and I had picked music that I thought Dean would relate to, rather than the variety I might have picked otherwise. I specifically targeted that he, stuff that I thought he would like to dance. And he's, he dances. For a while, we had our Toys for Tots dance with Marine Group in full dress uniforms. But now he got transferred to Texas, so nobody was there to pick up our toys. So we arranged to, to, to bring the toys to where the Marines are in, in the mall to dump them off, and we staged a, a flash mob dance. We didn't do it very well. I've studied some others since then. I know how I want to do it the next time. But at least we gathered in a group, and we had people in a variety of clothing, from crinolines to prairie skirts to slacks and jeans. And I mean, that's all women and men and different things. No men in skirts at that point. I saw you thinking. But we had people in a variety of clothing, and we just at a certain point squared up and started dancing. There are a couple things we do differently now. I would have people start in groups of maybe two with a circle left or a star, two-hand star, and then people <coughs> join in. We started as a full square. It's not the, it, it doesn't look quite as spontaneous. So study how to do a flash mob so that you do it well. Do you have to get permission? Um, yes. yes. <laughs> the best thing is to get permission. I, I'm not sure we did, but I know the, I worked this club with a co-caller a co if you were a couple. 
that's tough to say. And Kathy went out and made arrangements, and I, I'm not sure if she notified the mall. She notified the restaurant that we were coming. And we danced, kept it very short so the mall security didn't catch us. It's only illegal if you get caught. Right, it's only illegal if you get caught. I don't want it on YouTube with all of us going away in handcuffs. But, but do something, put the videos on YouTube, put them on Facebook, put them out, tweet. I, I am on Twitter, I haven't done anything with it, but that's part of my goal is to expand. As soon as I get rid of a couple of other jobs, I'm going to expand my presence on the internet. And I know other people are tweeting about our club, and because I get people saying, oh, I saw what you were doing. It's so important. Where, where did Mike and Ron go? Ron? Yeah. Where did they go to find out about that? They went to somebody's uh, phone and started looking on the internet. Where do people go to find out things these days? They pull out their phone or their device or whatever, and away they go on the internet. Callers, work on your skills. And here's the thing that I feel is the most, most important thing for callers to work on their skills. If you are working with new dancers, callers, learn how to work comfortably with the calls contained in the basic and mainstream programs. Learn how to be able to call a smooth dance that feels like a dance with five calls, with ten calls, with twenty calls. Please, please, learn how to change a figure in a singing call so that you can use the music you want with the calls that they know. <coughs> I have heard more than once, I have not yet killed anyone, but I have heard more than once a caller say, I'm going to teach you trade by so I can use this singing call. They're never going to succeed. You just took away the pleasure of the singing call because they haven't responded, they can't respond well enough to the call to dance the singing call if it's properly timed. They will fail. What time is your session tomorrow, Rick? I, that's a Rick? really good question. There's a session, There's a session on that. Yes. And it's tomorrow, tomorrow and yes. it's on the app. Re Refiguring singing calls. I yeah, at 9 o'clock maybe? Uh, I don't know. I will check. Yeah, I will check my guidebook. Yeah. Yes. My guidebook. Somebody, somebody let him know by 8.45. Yeah. yeah please. That, that's, that's it. Nine o'clock in Kansas B. Nine o'clock in Kansas B. We will talk about reconfiguring singing calls. In other words, you can do trade by from at least two of them. <laughs> maybe four, maybe we will, all of them. We will Rick, they will the microphone. Thank right. God, huh? <laughs> Rick, Rick, Rick will be there. There's going to be a program on refiguring singing calls. So you can change the figure. I do singing calls when I do beginner parties from tip one. If you can't do it, you're going to come in over there. And there are on the net books by Driscoll from Minnesota. There are books on the internet on singing calls, different varieties of singing calls. You can get just about anything you want from really, really easy to really, really hard. Yes, there's lots of different ways to find it. So, Erin has something. Okay. Unfortunately, I had to go get a new battery for my oxygen, but way back when you were talking about new music, and you were saying listen to the radio and stuff. You don't necessarily have to. Um, I find about 80% of Scott's pattern music, and I usually hear it when I'm sitting in a restaurant listening to the music that they're playing, or I'm walking through a store and I hear the music, and that's when it grabs me. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not specifically listening to it. I did actually buy him a new piece last week because I was looking at your Facebook post about how you were listening to, listening to Christopher Cross on the way to work. And right while I was reading it, a Christopher Cross song came over the, the um, radio in the restaurant, and I went, that would be great that music. So just keep your ears open. Yeah. I, I keep a notebook, a little little pad, in, you know, because I spend a lot of time in my car, and I keep a little pad, and then, you know, if I hear something, and I will, I will do, what do I call it, radio roulette sometimes. Although right now I'm just enjoying my new serious radio. But I'll do radio roulette, where I'll just kind of hit scan, stop the thing, and listen for a while. Or we have a couple of college stations near us, and I will 
listen to those stations so I can hear something else other than what I might choose to listen to. And then I keep, keep a notepad. My problem is follow-up. I have a lot of lists of things. I don't have time sometimes. I don't have time <coughs> to download them. I don't have time to get them on the computer I use for, for calling and edit them the way I want. I have a couple more things before we open this up. Uh, research music that goes with a theme. If you, you know, if, if, you're, if the club is doing a theme, care enough to, to pick a couple of songs that will fit with that theme. And sometimes there's nothing that we'll, we'll do there, you know, that will work, but then you can do something silly. One club had a theme of pink, and I wasn't calling to pink at that point in time, but, you know, it was when the pink, pink robin comes bob, bob, bobbing along. That's pretty stupid, but you know, they thought it was funny and they had a good time. And so, so there's no dignity there. They had a good time. You know, Christmas, St. Patrick's Day, spring, fall, uh, Halloween. I said this earlier, work on a way to mix dancers without being obvious. Mix the type of music. Don't just all play the same. And if you get a new piece, folks, and you're really enthusiastic about it, and you're calling it a weekend or a couple of dances in a row, don't use it over and over and over and over. <coughs> we were recently at a, at a weekend, at the, at, we were dancing, and one of the callers was using, it's all about the bass, about the bass, about the bass. That's great for the first four times <coughs> in weekend. After four times, it was one time and two times and three more times too many, folks. I don't care how much you like it. Use something else. That one is good for at least a hundred. <laughs> Not in the same weekend. Not in the same weekend. <laughs> the next time on the QC, we'll, we'll put limit to four times per weekend. Limit <laughs> <laughs> four per weekend. Then? For your songs, yes. Here we go. <laughs> oh, oh, the weekend. Here we go. All right, we're out of control here. But I'm serious. And if you go to a national convention, bring more than one piece of music that you care to you know, put. If, if you have your, your little iPod or whatever, have a, a, a group of things, because there have been times when the same song was done every hour, sometimes twice in an hour, in the same room. I don't care how good it is, guys, and there are some that I love. People, dancers don't want to hear it over and over and over again. More comments. Karen Patterson from Southwest New Mexico. Um, we did a prom on your theme dance kind of thing, and the way we mixed up the dancers that night was every lady had a dance card. And we, as the gentleman came in that night, they had to sign up for your dance card, and you couldn't put your partner on your dance card. He was only allowed to fill in if there was an empty spot. Go, go ahead. Sure. No, please. Okay. Uh, Rick Hampton, uh, by Shelley, California. Uh, Betsy, a couple minutes ago, was speaking of listen to the radio and, and, and the follow up of being able to, to find music. Uh, if you get a little app uh, for your smartphone uh, called Shazam, okay? So you're listening to, I don't know, what's a good station in all of them? 103.7. Okay. okay, so listen to the cat in Omaha. It's going through some of three stuff. And you hear this great song, but you have no idea what it is. You break out Shazam and you just put, listen. Yep. And for about 15, 20 seconds later, you look at it and there's the title, artist, and everything. In fact, you can hit a button to buy it. It gets downloaded to your phone. When you get home, you can transfer it to your laptop. Be careful about doing all that looking at it when you're driving. <laughs> no, that's all right. Don't worry about that. Just don't I'm too busy watching TV while I'm driving. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a car card. I'm Mike Hogan from Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, yeah, there's also an app called SoundHound that does the same thing. These smartphones are, it's amazing that they're smart. It's amazing that they even call them phones. I can't do that. You don't do much with them. Um, oh, what I was going to say is on your theme dances, uh, if you're on Facebook, well, first, if you're not, if you're not on Facebook, get on Facebook. Once you're on Facebook, there's a there's a uh, group called Square Dance Callers. 
college. It's called Square Dance College. So, and I see this all the time. There's guys that are doing a theme and they have no idea what kind of music. Anybody got any ideas? Get on Square Dance Callers, um, post, hey, we're doing a um, Mardi Gras theme. And does anybody have any ideas for music? You'll get amazing answers from, you know, tons and tons of callers that have years and years of experience. So it's a great resource if you need help with any of those kinds of things. Uh, it's called, it's on Facebook, and it's called Square Dance Callers. That's the group. Okay. Oh, and thank you for listening to the radio. <laughs> agreed, agreed. Radio is, radio is wonderful. Michael Alberry from Denver. Along the same line of not using the same music, I've developed a form that I print on the back of my contracts. And my wife is kind enough to keep track of all my music that I do at every dance, both powder and singing call. So when I go back to that club to call the next dance, in their little folder for that particular club, I have a track of all my music so I don't repeat the same music. Uh, and so I do different music at every dance. Also in your flash dance, your flash mob dance, new initiatives, which I'm the chairman of, 9 o'clock again tomorrow morning. On the website, there is how to do a flash mob dance. The, the two or three clubs that I've interviewed that have done them, and the one that did it correctly by getting permission and did everything fine, and the other one that got shut down by security. <laughs> and then do it by permission. So if you want to know how to do it, it's on the Caller Lab website. I actually keep notebooks, uh, but I, I like it on the back of the contract. That may, I may change that. More easily referred to. I don't do it because I don't call as many dances as Vic does, but he uses, um, not square use, square view. Square, uh, square, square, square view? He doesn't use square view. It's oh. the SQMP3, Dave Wilson's. Oh, okay. But square view probably does the same thing. He goes to the trouble to create a different folder, a, a playlist. Square favorites yep. for each club yep. and when you play it it makes it yellow and so when he goes to that club he goes to that folder and he knows all the music he's done at that club so he doesn't repeat unless somebody specifically requests yep. so basically our whole idea is don't do it the same way over and over again and expect different results. Try and reach out to people, get on the internet, change your format, and nurture new students. Work on, if your area has no mainstream, start working on getting mainstream so the dancers have a place to dance. Make it feel like a dance. Callers, make it feel like a dance. We have somewhere in some discussion recently we were talking, oh, was the the uh, leadership seminar, the, the community dance leadership seminar, somebody made the comment that they were at some lesson, it wasn't a beginner party, it was some lesson, and in the two and a half hour lesson, the music was played for 10 minutes. Yeah, that's sadly typical. I know. Well, I've heard that. I don't believe it, but I've heard it. So I expect that you are right, Rick, that it is typical, but don't be one of those callers. Make it feel like a dance. Learn to teach as efficiently as possible and get the music back on so they can be dancing. During my lessons, most of the time, every tip has a pattern of a singing call. And make it feel like a dance. But that is truly because I'm comfortable doing singing calls with a limited number of basics to get back to that theme. And the callers who can't, don't do singing calls. The dancers miss all of that, all of that experience. And uh, Scott Brown was saying in his teaching order, the the singing calls provide a good uh, reinforcement of what's been going on. I feel the same way, and I feel that it also. I don't care how much you are trying to get the dancers to dance up to speed in a class. And I don't care whether this class is beginner or plus or, or on whatever. When you're teaching, you kind of tailor the choreography a little bit to how fast the dancers are reacting. And so when they graduate, they can't dance up to speed because we haven't created a way for them to do that. 
Singing calls force you to, to make them dance up to speed so they can be comfortable. Yeah, another comment. Sue White from Arkansas. Um, listening to Bessie talk about singing calls and new dancers, uh, it came to me that I didn't understand the format of a singing call until I had been dancing for many years. So I think that should be part of the initial teaching is to teach the new dancers the usual format of a singing call. You know, that there's a, an opener and a closer and, and so forth. I think that would be helpful. Let them know what to expect. That's the only way after your opening statement. What happens when you run into a club that you're the club caller for? And this is the way we've done it for years, and we're not going to change, but how do we get more dancers to our dance? And as a new club caller, you make recommendations, and they fight you tooth and nail. Anybody have any ideas? Buddy and then Rick. It's my opinion, and in my humble opinion, sometimes you're going to spend more precious resources trying to convince somebody to do something they absolutely will not do. And there's something in the, in the world I, 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 I call evolution. <coughs> and uh, you know, dinosaurs don't own the earth today for, for, for various reasons. And, and I do believe that that's what happens in some cases to some square dance clubs. If you refuse to change, it's uh, that's what happens. And, and, and I think that your, your resources are wasted if you go in there and go head to head, toe to toe, with somebody who is insistent upon doing the same thing no matter what, I would rather see this die than see it change. That's just my opinion. My, my opinion further would be resign.
and then they don't understand why they don't. And if a club does come up and steal their banner, it may take six to eight months for them to go get it back, just because they don't want to travel 15 miles. So it, it's, and, and trying to get different ideas past them. First night of lessons when I took over. Well, that's not the way so-and-so used to do it. I'm not so-and-so. <coughs> okay. So there's, there's a lot of resentment, a lot of resistance, and I'm, I'm trying to get new ideas out there, and it's just not happening. This is Buddy again, and uh, let, let me let me come back and, and, and kind of focus into what I said earlier too. Uh, I, I, I I sometimes think that we, we think that a club when we say this club is not going to do this or this club is going to uh, dig your heels, and we tend to think that there's a consensus, and I don't think that's always always necessarily true. I I, I believe a buddy of mine told me years ago. He said it only takes one bad president to kill a club, and I believe that's true in many many instances. Uh, I've seen callers, friends of mine, who quit after being with a club for 30 years. And I said, why are you doing this? He says, I don't like the president. I said, you and I have seen these guys come and go. Ride it out. And, but let's not punish the dancers for one or two fools who are in, in a position that they should not be in. And, and, I, and I say this with all due respect. I, I respect the fact that these folks are volunteering, but sometimes uh, they, they, they're, they're just not putting the, the good of everyone ahead of their own self-interest. Uh, so that, that being said, you might be going toe-to-toe -to -toe with one or two people who don't want to change. But you might find that when you cut away the vocal minority, you might find the majority of folks out there who are open to new ideas and who are willing to change. They're usually about silent. Go ahead, Mike. Go ahead. Yes, Scott, in Oklahoma. Um, usually, that that majority that's in the middle, they're the ones that never say anything. So if you don't go out and speak to them and get them interacting, they, you have no idea what they think. You got one group that's going to say to you, "Everything's wonderful." You got another group that says, "Everything's horrible." The ones in the middle are the ones that want to. And sometimes here again, you don't want to get, you don't want to pick one against the other. You, the, the last thing that I think we need in spreadism today is divisiveness. We, we, we don't need that. We need to have a sense of that uh, live and let live. If, if you want to go on and start a basics club or whatever you decide to do, everybody should be on board with that. Uh, I, I just caution anybody against getting involved with a lot of fighting to get somebody to change. If somebody's so dug in and entrenched in not changing, you're better off taking the, the, the goodwill, the positive thoughts, uh, put, put the sun in your face, put the wind in your back, and go out there and find an area that doesn't have a square dance program, and I guarantee there are a lot of them out there right now, and start. And you'll find one or two people who are from an existing group who will be your biggest fans, who will become the nucleus of your new club, and will create a tipping point to success. To a front, while, while Sean is running the microphone, I'm going to say, I just had a thought, Mike. Had, you know, they've always done it this way. They're you know, naysaying what your new ideas are. Have you asked them, you know, to think of any new ideas that they feel you could implement? Put it back on them. Say, look, are you totally satisfied with how this club is going? We, I feel we need new ideas. Can you think of some that you'd like me to try? Put it back on them. Columbia again. Um, you guys are here. We, uh, we as Square Dance callers uh, are involved with our club 30 years and we see presidents come and go. And you guys are here getting educated, learning about new things that are happening and new ideas, what's working in different parts of the country, what's not working in different parts of the country. So I encourage you, even though you're contracted every year, to be a leader with your group, you have the background knowledge that chances are very few of your club members actually have. So you can bring them ideas. You can't enforce them necessarily, but you can bring them ideas. Um, Buddy stole a little bit of my thunder, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit it anyway. There was a, uh, a study that I'm aware of that happened um, in this last year in a community in the country here. And one of, and it was done by a university, 
um, one of the very clear lines that they had in their discovery was that the current system, the current clubs in that area, the members of those clubs would rather die than change. And I think you see that probably in more of a minority than, than we think. There's probably a lot of people in our clubs that would like to make some changes. Change happens because of the need. They are so used to the way that, they're, that their clubs are run and how they dance, and they're very comfortable with it. Sometimes change is difficult for people. And the older the dancer, the older the person, the more likely it is that they're going to be resistant to that change. Um, so work with your clubs to be a leader to try and help create change so that we're working in a positive direction. And be open to the idea that you may have to give up and say, this club, because I mean, if, if all of your members are, say, on an average age of 75, and they like it exactly the way that it is, they don't want you to play the new music. They don't want to change the dress code. They would rather die than change. So be it if that's the case. If you've done your work and you know that that's the case, I'm not saying just, just you know, quit. Although I think offering the resignation once a year is a nice idea. But I would suggest to you that let that club live out its course and die a graceful death. And in the meantime, if you want to continue to call. That's the time that you need to go out and start a new group. And you can start a new group. We're talking about trying to lump, um, lower the average age of dancers. There's a generation issue uh, of, I have a lady that I work with that came to my lessons. I invited her. She's done lots of different dance all her life. She came to my beginner class the first night, had a great time, tried to recruit several of her friends to square dance who wouldn't, and so she didn't come back. When I asked her why, she said, I had a fantastic time, but I just don't fit in. Your dancers are too old for me. She didn't fit in because of the age group. She's 58. And our dance group was too old for her. So I'm not saying kill off your club, but at some point, we've got to go out and we've got to start new clubs with younger people who all feel very comfortable with each other. How exactly we do that, I'm still working on. But I've got a lot of ideas. So uh, I would encourage you to do both. Be a leader with your home club and be open-minded to starting brand new groups. Yeah, Rick, again. Um, we have someone, well, many have said we have to be leaders as callers, and we do. Uh, it is truly mission critical if square dancing has any kind of national, statewide, or international activity or is to continue, we have to be leaders. Uh, the only other alternative is, is everything you see around us collapses. And what we have is we have a club here called by so-and-so and a club way over there. It's called, in other words, back to where it was prior to calling them. Okay? Uh, it seems kind of silly after 40 some odd years of working on this stuff that we should be at the same point we started at, but it's kind of where we're at. Um, a lot of the reasons the call and back call and back came about, among other things, lack of standardization, lack of communication, uh, not being happy with Bob Osgood's list of calls and things like that. And we're, we're getting to the point where we're having the same issues currently. So if a club wants to do something that you know is a bad idea, you've got two choices. You need to, with, with your own standards, say that there is, you know, there's a place that I'm comfortable meeting you in the middle, but there's a line where I just will not go below it, uh, and I'm not going to work for you. Uh, like I said, I tried to get that out of the way before the class starts. But there are sometimes, you know, if the class says, um, how about if we teach in a bar? I'd say, let's do it. Which bar, what time? If they were to say, I want to teach people how to main go to plus in 12 weeks, I would say, you're going to have to get somebody else because that's impossible. Thank you. Hi. I know that those of you who have attended Color Lab before have heard this idea, but there may be some people who haven't, so I'm going to throw it out there one more time. When we come to convention, we get the direction 
that has the entire program with a list of the sessions and a description. I take mine, I separate out the, the paper clip or the staple and I put each one in a plastic sleeve, put it into a, a binder and I take it to the dances with me and I say, you know, I just attended Caller Lab and I want you to be able to see what we were doing at Caller Lab. Why don't you look at, at what the program is? Because the majority of people, I got tired of the folks at home asking me, well, what did you do to the list in the three days that you were at Caller Lab? We don't spend three days tinkering with the list, folks. We do a lot of education. Dancers don't know that. And maybe if you put the ideas out, the dancers will then, part of the, the resistance to change is because the dancers don't like an idea that somebody else gives. But maybe if they read it in the direction, they can think of it as their own idea, and then they'll present it to you. And maybe we'll get a change made that way. Maybe it won't work. But at least you've gotten some people in, into the idea that Color Lab is not all about the list or the base. Uh, but not all about the list and, and, the, and the programs slash levels, but it's about color education and making square dancing better for the world, and that's what we're looking to do. It doesn't hurt, it doesn't cost that much. I use the same binder each year, take out the old, the old direction and put it in next year's program, or this year's program. But let the dancers see it. It kind of opens their eyes. Final thoughts for me, I think we're almost out of time. Uh, just a reminder, there isn't, I don't think there's an easy answer that's going to be the right answer for every group. Um, there's lots of different problems, and with the different ages, some people might be happy with their older group, and they just want to do the same thing week after week. If that's working for them, that's okay. Find something to try. If you need to try something, find something, try it. If it doesn't work, try something else. Just do something. The Facebook groups, the only reason I don't engage too much is the contention that sometimes happens is uncomfortable to me. So there was, I was going through my packet, there was an article by Barry about agreeable disagreeing and how we can communicate with each other in a positive way even when we don't agree. Um, and when you get out on Facebook, I would encourage you to be positive in your, dis somebody says, hey, I think we should have competition. Well. My group would really not like that, but that might be a great idea for another area. So just because it's not your thing, don't say that's dumb and it'll never work. It might not for you, but it might work somewhere else. So just be open and try to be positive and try new things because, like I said, there's not one answer. There's a lot of different answers working together in each area. You ever been to a local college meeting and they get into a big argument and won't talk to each other for weeks? You ever been to one of those? It's just on paper and it's faster over the computer. That's all it is. Yeah. Actually, it's, it's even worse over the computer because if you talk to people face to face, you can sometimes see their body language or whatever. When you're on, when you're on email or Facebook or whatever, you lose those uh, nuances. And all of a sudden, it, people are shouting back and forth in amazing caps lock. Caps lock, caps lock. Yes. Yes. exactly. So be aware of that. And, and be aware too that even though it says score dance callers, there are a lot of dancers in those groups. And it's public. They, a lot of people you can just join in their public groups. Be aware that the things that we're saying out there are being read by you know, dancers at large and anybody who wants to go look at it. So be professional, be respectful, and be positive. It's also there forever. It's there it's forever. Also there forever. Well, you can delete your own. You can go delete your own unless, comments if you choose. Yeah, unless somebody cut and pasted it. You don't know who cut and pasted it before you did. That's true. Okay. Well, we thank you all for being here and for caring and whatever. We hope you, we, we've given you some ideas. If you think we should do this again at, at a future convention, put that on your critique sheet because the executive committee reads every critique sheet and listens to every session, and that's how they plan future conventions. So it's important for you to turn in those critique sheets. They aren't just thrown in the, in, in the trash and shredded. They are read, read and read and, and perused. That's my $10 word of the day. <laughs> <laughs>